The new law to tackle hate crime in Scotland was introduced yesterday by Hamza Yousaf's SNP. The bill has attracted plenty of criticism, including from the likes of Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. The Scottish Government says that the Hate Crime and Public Order Act will provide greater protection for victims and communities. It is intended to consolidate existing hate crime laws, but also creates a new offence of threatening or abusive behaviour which is intended to stir up hatred on the grounds of age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity and variations in sex characteristics. J.K. Rowling has challenged Scotland's new hate crime law in a series of social media posts, inviting police to arrest her if they believe she has committed an offence. Rowling began her series of tweets. Scotland's Hate Crime Act comes into effect today. Women gain no additional protections, of course, but well-known trans activist Beth Douglas, darling of prominent Scottish politicians, falls within a protected category. For you, Lovely Scottish lass and convicted double rapist Isla Bryson found her true, authentic female self shortly before she was due to be sentenced. Misgendering is hate, so respect Isla's pronouns, please. Love the leggings. Fragile flower Katie Dolotowski, six foot five, was rightly sent to a women's prison in Scotland after conviction. This ensured she was protected from violent, predatory men unlike the 10-year-old girl Katie sexually assaulted in a woman's public bathroom. Samantha Norris was cleared of exposing her penis to two 11-year-old girls. Hooray! Unfortunately, she was then convicted for possession of 16,000 images of children being raped and sexually assaulted. Be that as it may, Sam's still a lady to me. Scottish woman and butcher Amy George abducted an 11-year-old girl while dressed in female clothing. No idea why this was mentioned in court. Of course she was wearing women's clothing. She's a woman. Amy took the girl home and sexually abused her over a 27 hour period. But most women aren't axe toters or sex offenders. So let's talk role models. Julia Valentino in red wanted to play on the women's team because of sisterhood, validation and political visibility. Naturally, she was given some boring cis girls place. Yay for inclusion. Riddle Wadwa, head of a Scottish rape crisis centre, says sexual violence happens to bigoted people as well. She has no gender recognition certificate, but was still appointed to a job advertised for women only. Time to be challenged on your prejudices, rape victims. Munro Bergdorf isn't just a pretty face. Public campaigner for a children's charity, until safeguarding concerns were raised, she was appointed UN Women's First Ever UK Champion. What makes a woman a woman has no definitive answer, says Monroe. Great choice, UN women. Katie Neves has been appointed as the UN Women's UK delegate. She switched from straight man to lesbian at the age of 48 and in a leaked 2022 webinar, described how she used to enjoy stealing and wearing her sister's underwear. A truly relatable representative. Last but least, TV's India Willoughby proves we women can call a black broadcaster a nasty bitch who wouldn't be anywhere without woke. Dub lesbians men, insult the looks of a female Olympic swimmer, joke about kidnapping feminists and still get airtime. What a gal. April Fools, only kidding. Obviously, the people mentioned in the above tweets aren't women at all, but men, every last one of them. Rowling finished her series of tweets. It is impossible to accurately describe or tackle the reality of violence and sexual violence committed against women and girls or address the current assault on women's and girls' rights unless we are allowed to call a man a man. Freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. She then added the hashtag, arrest me. Douglas Murray tweeted his support of Rowling. He said, I stand with JK Rowling. If the new 500 hate crime champions, strange name, in Scotland want to come for her, then they can come for all of us. They won't find many Scottish writers they won't have to arrest. Human beings are not a hermaphroditic species. So good luck, boys. Okay, so so my thoughts about the um, the Hate Crime and Public Order Act 2021. Uh, my first thought is this: please let's build a wall and stop it trickling over into England, um, because at the moment it's only it's it's only in Scotland, and that's where it needs to stay. I feel terrible uh, for the Scottish people that, who have found themselves under this ludicrous, ludicrous, draconian law. Uh, and my great fear is that it will it will leak across the border, and some of the more enthusiastic police forces, particularly those in like the likes of Northumbria, 
um, West Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, um, will will embrace it as though it were uh, law in England. That's my that's my main concern. I, I think J.K. Rowling is absolutely right um, to make a string of tweets in defiance of this ludicrous act. You cannot legislate against reality. You simply cannot. You, you know, you can be King Canute if you want to, and you can make a law that says the tide cannot come in, but it's not going to stop the tide from coming in. And anybody who's got a brain will recognise that the tide is coming in. When J.K. Rowling calls males men, she is absolutely on the side of biology. She is on the side of reason. She is on the side of science. And she is on the side of fact. You cannot legislate against that. And it's entirely wrong to do so. There is, I, I, I'm, I'm a great believer in obeying the laws of a country, uh, but only to the point where they are reasonable. When a law states that the earth is the center of the universe uh, or the tide uh, cannot come in, we have a duty to defy it because it's based on magical thinking. And J.K. Rowling is correct to resist this magical thinking because being a woman, as J.K. Rowling is, she speaks for you know half of the population and half of our population are women. You cannot identify into being a woman. If you are a woman, you are disproportionately li likely to be the subject of an assault, um, etc. And women have got to be able to correctly name their assailants. They've got to be able to correctly name the danger. And the danger is from men, adult human males. So that's the, that's the biological uh, factual uh, objection to this act. The second objection that I have to this act is that we are allowed to, we should be allowed to speak freely. And speaking freely occasionally means criticizing um, the prevailing ideology. It also means that the, the free speech has also got to include the right to be wrong. And, you know, even if history tells us that, that those of us who are um, gender critical are on the wrong side of history, and it turns out in actual fact that women can in fact become men and men can become women, then that doesn't alter anything. We still have the right in 2024 to be able to, to, to speak up our objections. If it turns out that we're wrong, so be it. It doesn't matter. We've got to be able to speak out um, and say what our concerns are and to be able to call a spade a spade, a man a man, a woman a woman. We've got to be able to do that even if history says that we were wrong. I don't, I don't know how I could be a police officer in Scotland. Um, I, I, I think if you're a police officer, you have a duty to uphold the law, but you don't have a duty to uphold unjust law. Um, you, 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 the, the old excuse that we were simply obeying orders it will not wash. We've got, to, uh, we've got to resist this. If I were a police officer um, in Scotland, I would absolutely refuse to uh, engage in any of this nonsense. Uh, but I would have refused to engage in this nonsense a long time back. Um, the, the, whole, the whole idea about non-crime crimes, non-crime hate incidents, etc. Um, I think all of that has been an encroachment upon our liberty, upon our free, freedom of expression. And I would not have had anything to do with it whatsoever. I think the police, it's the police's job to uphold the law. It's the police's job to keep the, to keep the king's peace. It's not the job of the police to police and control what we say, how we say it, etc. And particularly in the confines of our own homes, which of course is what this ridiculous act does. It criminalises speech within our own four walls. Now, the Law Commission in England attempted to bring this law into the UK a couple of years ago, and it was rejected. My worry is that it's going to come via stealth. We found since my, since my victory in 2020, uh, 2021, uh, what, what, what should have happened is that the police should have backed off from recording all instances of so-called hate speech, except where that hate speech was likely to lead to a crime. Now, they haven't done that. What they've done instead 
they've they've um, taken um, uh, Section 127 of the Communications Act, they've taken the Malicious Communications Act, they've taken the Public Order Act, and they have used these acts in entirely the wrong way in order to try and criminalise us uh, because we've expressed ideas which, which challenge uh, the current liberal orthodoxy. Um, so I would have, I, as, a, as a British policeman, I would have had nothing to do with any of that, nothing at all. And I think it is incumbent upon anybody who is bothered about the rule of law, who is bothered about uh, freedom of speech, who is bothered about reality, and, and who is bothered about being able to speak out about our reality. Uh, I think we have to resist. I think we have no choice, we have to resist. There is a time and a place for, for resistance, and I think that time and place is now.